Welcome back. We now go to Lyle Shelton, who will give us a Christian perspective of what's happening in the various Australian parliaments. Thanks for joining us, Lyle. Good to be with you, Francine. The federal government has for the first time committed to ending homelessness in Australia. What are its targets and is this an advance? This is certainly a big advance in the area of homelessness, Francine. We've seen right from the time when uh, Kevin Rudd took over as opposition leader, uh, then throughout the election campaign last year and in the earliest days of his prime ministership, uh, him put this issue fairly and squarely on the national agenda. Uh, he's delivered at the weekend with um, $800 million over five years uh, of funding for homelessness, and that's uh, funding that's jointly provided by the states and the Commonwealth. Uh, some 105,000 people each night uh, sleep on the streets in Australia, something which uh, offends the Christian sensibilities of the Prime Minister, and uh, this is very much motivated by his concern for social justice. There's also um, 175,000 uh, households uh, on waiting lists for public housing, and this money is designed to try and reduce those waiting lists as well by building more public housing stock. Were there any other interesting developments at the recent Council of Australian Governments meeting? Yeah, certainly COAG has uh, allocated some $140 billion worth of spending uh, over time uh, in areas such as uh, homelessness, disabilities, uh, Indigenous services and of course education. On the education front, uh, we've seen $1.1 billion uh, allocated towards uh, 1,500 of the nation's poorest performing schools. And uh, this is certainly a, a worthy initiative designed to try and bring some of our, our struggling schools up to a higher standard. Uh, in return, uh, teachers have been given uh, more powers to hire and fire, uh, sorry, principals have been given more powers to hire and fire uh, teachers and also there's greater reporting to parents. So there's certainly um, a, a trade-off there, uh, which is, will certainly be welcomed by many parents. On a different topic, I understand that Philip Nishi is continuing his euthanasia push. What is the latest? Well, Philip Nitsky continues to travel around Australia holding forums and workshops on uh, so-called voluntary euthanasia. The trouble with uh, so-called voluntary euthanasia is it quickly leads to involuntary euthanasia and we've seen in Holland where euthanasia has been uh, legalised for a number of years that uh, up to a thousand people a year are killed without their permission and uh, those statistics uh, have been verified through medical journals. Um, the disappointing thing about Dr Nitsky's forums is that he encourages illegal activity such as smuggling uh, veterinary drugs from Mexico, drugs which are designed to kill horses to be used uh, on, on humans. And of course the whole euthanasia debate uh, certainly puts pressure on those who are, who are sick, who are frail uh, and elderly uh, to cause their lives to be ended so that they're not a burden on society. That's the wrong message to be sending and uh, we're certainly very concerned at ACL about what Dr Nitsky's up to because it gives uh, credence to people like Senator Bob Brown who are very keen to get euthanasia resurrected on the national agenda. Thanks very much for your time, Lyle. Pleasure, Francine. Lyle Shelton in Canberra for Politics in Focus.